I'm gonna go ahead and, and try to center it. Centering is always done on a high speed. When you come back to throw in af after you haven't been doing it for a while, there's, you feel a bit rusty. Once It's almost like um, going door to door after you haven't gone for a while because you're sick or something. It's the same kind of thing where you just you feel a little bit rusty. And then also you forget the forms and how you, how you did it. So then I slow it down a little bit more. Slow it down to medium speed when I when I lift up, because at this point what happens is that the centrifugal force at a high speed makes the top come out like this, and you don't want that. You want to be able to control how it works. So primarily when, you, when you're doing any kind of like drinking vessel, your goal is to do a cylinder. This is kind of what I'm doing right now. But what I'm doing is as I'm lifting the clay up, I'm pushing the bottom in because there's a lot of clay down there and then I sort of lift up from there. So when you, when you lift any kind of form, you have to realize that um, when you lift up and then you later kind of bulge it out, that height gets lost um, when you actually uh, create the bulge of the, of the form. So you always have to go taller than what you intended to go to be able to um, lose that height later when you actually bulge out a little. It was really thick there, and I'm lifting it up, and just. As a note, my pressure is not consistent. My pressure is actually, there's more pressure in the bottom because it's thicker. But as you move up, you have to feel the clay and actually adjust your pressure to, so that the, the, the piece is even. Because if I was to use the same amount of pressure as it did in the bottom at the top, the top would thin out. And sometimes new uh, throwers or uh, wheel throwers have that problem where the top is really thin and the bottom is really thick. So this is something that as, as you do it more and more, you'll be able to feel it and be able to adjust. So you can see I kind of pushed in, but I'm using that clay that I pushed in and I'm lifting it up and adding to the base of this piece. So I kind of, I'm kind of done lifting it and now it's time for shaping it. So what I'm going to actually do is slow down even more. And then I'm going to um, go in and uh, sop up some of the water that's in the bottom. It's funny how water is both your helper and enemy in throwing because if you have too much water sitting in the bottom, it, it'll weaken the bottom if it gets too soggy, but you need water to help you throw. So it's sort of like this uh, back and forth. So I'm going to go for kind of a bell shape on the bottom. So my bell is in super. This is not a super wide bell. Just a gradual bell.
Okay, so I'm kind of there now. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is just try to, once again come back in and use this tool that I have. It's like it's a sponge on a stick and sop up some of the water. And I think I have another tool somewhere. It's a little better than this. I have to find it though. So it won't be in this video. And I use the um, the cutting tool here to help define the foot. And then um, I use the ch chamois here to um, deal with the uh, lip so that it's kind of compressed and nice to the to the touch. Okay, so that's the first piece. What Okay, so we're at the point where I fired the uh, the piece, the pieces, and what I'm doing now is unloading the kiln. So, um, basically, there's there's two temperatures that I fire at. I fire to cone O5, uh, which is about 1,000, maybe 200 degrees, and then after that, after I glaze, what I'll do is I'll I'll um. um Fire to cone five, and that's like almost two thousand, I think. So, um, what you do is you fire once. The first time you fire, your goal is to uh, make it hard enough that you can handle, and that it will still absorb some of the glaze because it's it needs to be absorbent enough to do that. And then when you fire again, it um, it solidifies the actual, it's, it basically vitrifies the silica which makes it um, very hard. So that's what's nice about stoneware is that it's very durable. And what I'm doing uh, now is I'm, I'm loading the kiln. And so I'll just show you some of the, the pieces. A little bit hot, but just as a comparison, here is uh, one of the pieces that I've been fired. Uh, here's the same piece pre-firing, so you can see how much shrinkage there is. There's a bit of shrinkage here. Um, once you fire to cone 5, it shrinks even more. Um, you'll have seen the photos already of that, so it just gives you an idea. Um, so now I'm unloading the kiln, and then I'm going to uh, glaze, and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so now um, I'm going to decorate this um, wine glass tumbler, and the way that I'm doing it now is with this royal blue. I just hold it like this, and then I let it drip, and it creates a pattern as it goes around it. It kind of hugs it. It's kind of interesting. So obviously it's, this is very gestalt, gestalt, whatever. It just sort of happens, whatever it is. Right. So here's the final piece. You can see um, how it turns out. Basically, uh, the pattern just sort of develops on its own. So that's the new um, wine tumbler.